is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. And good afternoon, 2.03 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. Oh, the Rick Roberts Show. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Uh, man, I've, I've got more stuff to get to. I may have to borrow some of Mark Levin's time. Uh, it, uh, You know the, the police officers that were massacred? Did you know there was, there was a mural to them? Do you know about that? I had no clue about that. Yeah, the city said it violates uh, code, so they took it down yesterday. How fitting. Yeah. Yeah, you can take down Confederate monuments and memorials uh, all day long because it offends someone. But the mural honoring officers in Dallas, that police massacre, was removed due to code violations. Now, forgive me. You know, I was born at night, but not last night. Seems to me... We could do something. This mural honoring the five Dallas police officers that were killed during uh, the 2016 ambush was taken down yesterday over city code violations. You know, a family member hopes the artwork can be saved. I hope it can too. Uh, But I need everyone within the sound of my voice um, to call the mayor's office. You know, this weak need, which way is the political wind blowing um, individual? I, you know, I don't know how he got hired. I wasn't here then. Um, but I can tell you right now, he this guy belongs in California. You know, I broadcasted out of California for 16 and a half years. I can tell you, he would fit right in. The large mural was painted on a fence with metal panels outside the Last Call Lounge in uh, the Bishop, uh, Bishop Arts District. That's just... Now it's kind of south, a little bit of downtown. It paid tribute to the officers that were killed during an attack. On uh, you, you all remember this: the Black Lives Matter rally, the cops that were there protecting the protesters, even though the protesters were protesting them. It was July seventh, two thousand sixteen, a date you should commit to memory. Um, they got together with the artist. The artist came up with the idea. The owner is. Uh, I think Diana Paz, if I'm not mistaken, she was issued a a violation notice in May, which said she failed to obtain a permit to use metal panels in the construction and that the fence blocks visibility at a nearby four-way stop. You guys can't figure out how to take care of that? Can't do that? It would seem to me, it would seem to me that you would be able to come up with something. A city official today uh, told uh, Fox News that uh, the city compliance staff photographed the fence in June and documented the fence without the mural. The mural's believed to have been painted the next month. Um, This is nuts. Uh, Don't tell me that you can't come up with something. Um, You can, if you wanted to. Again, it's uh, Diana... Paz, P-A-Z, uh, she's uh, she's the owner, and she needs your support. The mayor needs to uh, have, uh, you know what, do this. Instead of having to relegate a mural to commemorate uh, the memory of five brave police officers that were doing their duty, how about this, take the entire fence down and put it in on city property. How, th- how about that? Thank you. you. There's no reason that you can't do something if you want to. Do you follow what I'm saying? You know, I've, I've got, I'm looking at a picture of the mural. The city filed a lawsuit in March regarding the property as a result of the ongoing violations after receiving a warning of a potential $1,000 per day fine for keeping the mural of the fallen officers up. Uh, Paz said the decision was made to take the mural down this week. I'm sure she can't afford $1,000 a day. I know I couldn't. Valerie Zapparapa, whose son Patrick was killed in the ambush, along with Michael Smith, Lauren Ahrens, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing that not just exactly, Michael uh, Kroll and Brent Thompson, 
Anything that honors the officers killed that day is worth keeping. And she's right. I feel like if it's trashed, it's a dishonor to my son and the officers who lost their lives. She's right. The fence is described by city officials as it's illegal and constructed in such a way that it can conceal illegal activity. You know, taking the mural down of the five fallen police officer ought to be a legal activity. You know, the mural painted on this fence, it depicts a very painful moment. It shows uh, the officers carrying a flag draped ca- uh, casket. Um, <laughs> the city of Dallas unveiled the Dallas Circle of Heroes Memorial last year, which is a stone monument detailing the sacrifice of each fallen officer. Um, you know, she remains hopeful that someone will see what's happened and will help to restore. She's asking for the city's help. And she's right. We need to put this mural someplace um, where the city can live with themselves. Anybody on the city council that's listening to me, and don't tell me you don't listen, I know you do, because I'm on you all the time. Okay, well, here's a chance to reach out to the city. Move it someplace on city property where it can be seen by everyone, and it should be seen by everyone. You know, once you look at this mural, as she said, it shows people care, shows respect, shows honor, not only for her son, but all the other officers. So I need to, as a matter of fact, we not that I would give out the, the mayor's phone number. Gosh, far be it for me to do something like that. Uh, we need, we need uh, you know, we got uh, 71,000 people saw that uh, hashtag put God in prayer back in schools. We need 71,000 calls to the mayor's office. You know, put this mural someplace where everyone can see it. Put, put this mural someplace um, that won't violate your city code. You know, this, this is a, I'm sorry, I, I got to be careful what I say here, truly. All right, I've, I've got that going on. I want to talk to some people involved with that. Also, I've got an apology to make. I've got an apology to make um, to some of those callers that you that would call into the show and say, Rick, they're going to take our guns. They're going to take our guns. I've got an apology to make because someone, someone is suggesting that we do away with the Second Amendment, not just any person walking the street, not just any Joe Blow like uh, like you and me, a retired Supreme Court justice. I'll tell you about that and take your calls next. All right, uh, two seventeen the time. Um, man, I, I just it, it's just one thing after another with these people, the city council and the mayor. You can't tell me. In uh, Dallas is not Brush, Colorado. We're not Hutchinson, Kansas. You know, this is a major city in the United States. And, man, I don't know how this mayor ever got elected. I talk, he, You know, to his credit, he did call in the other day and we talked. But at the end of the day, you're telling me you can't find something to do with this mural honoring the five Dallas police officers that were massacred during the 2016 ambush attack It was taken down yesterday over city code violations. Where is it? Where's the mural? What what are you going to do with it? How about erecting it someplace on city property? You know, I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm looking right here. uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six uh, police officers in their dress blues, um, pallbearers, carrying a flag-draped coffin. I'm pretty sure, City Council and Mayor, this is going to be okay. No confederacy as far as I can see, so you don't have to rip it down. The mural is on the property of the Last Call Lounge in Dallas, which paid tribute to the fallen officers on the one-year anniversary of the ambush. So how about you take it down? It's on a metal fence. I'm no fence expert, but I'm pretty sure you can take it down and put it up someplace else. If you just absolutely have to. All right, let's uh, let's go to Roy. Roy in Dallas. Roy, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Roy? I'm doing okay, Rick. Uh, that was very moving. Uh, 
in, in regards to your comments and also the news post that was done on the local stations last night. And uh, the citizens of Dallas, they need to put their hearts in the place of Mrs. Zamoripa and the wives who lost their husbands in downtown Dallas on July 7th of 2016. Uh it would be very fitting, in my opinion. You mentioned city property. There off of 1500 Morella, there is an existing memorial to police officers with slain officers, badge numbers that were emblazoned. And when the rays of light from the sun pierce those badge numbers, they reflect on the grassy knoll. That would be my suggestion in one area where that mural could be placed in that area. Also, Jim Lake and Associates, Jim Lake did a very fitting, out of his own pocket, a memorial to our officers down off Irving Boulevard and Manufacturing with a flagpole and with benches and water fountains, also with dog bowl dishes for the, the dogs to get water if you bring pets. That is very, very moving as well. Jim, I'm sure Jim Lake and Associates, they can also uh, address this matter with the sitting mayor and the sitting council. Well, I, I don't know where the mayor is on the deal. I don't know where the city council is, uh, but it looks to me like it's just another bureaucratic uh, speed bump, and it doesn't make any sense. You know, the city council could have said, hey, you know, this violates city code. We're going to look around, see what we can do about the code violation. Um, save uh, anything there. We'll remove it, keep it intact, and put it up someplace else. I, I'm pretty sure the mayor doesn't have so much on his plate. He couldn't do that. Well, Rick, the other thing, too, is it's quite coincidental. In the month of May, we honor the slain officers across the United States, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice not only in Dallas, but also in Washington, D.C., and that event is coming up. Well, let's, uh, let's see what the, what the mayor and the city council um, <laughs> do about this. It's, uh, and if, Ms., if you know Ms. Paz, if, she's, if you give her a call, tell her to give me a buzz. Uh, let's see where she is on this. I mean, you know, she, uh, you know, she hung in there as long as she could. Uh, it just... It, it's crazy. She said they were in meetings and conversations with the city. Then about a month ago, they stopped uh, getting any information from them. And the city filed a lawsuit in March. And they were going to, you know, it was a potential 1000 per day fine for keeping the mural up on this fence. Oh, well, instead of that, how about how about you, you pull yourself out of the bureaucratic ooze uh, that is uh, the nonsense of most city bureaucracies and say, hey, let's work together, see if we can uh, find some way to keep this thing intact to honor our fallen officers. Maybe uh, we can find a, a city area we can we can do something. No, no. But, but you've dealt you've dealt with the city bureaucracy. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. When we come back. I'm going to give uh, give an apology uh, to those people that have called this show from time to time saying, Rick, they're going to take our guns. Rick, the left wants to get our guns. And you know what I've said. Well, I owe them an apology. I, I do indeed. Uh, there is a move um, that is going on even as I speak. Not, not the least of which was this Saturday uh, luck. The, the teenagers were emotional. They were angry. I get all that. They don't know what they were angry about, but they were angry. It just, oh. This goes above and beyond, above and beyond anything, anything that I imagined. I mean, it truly does. You know, I I look at the Constitution as something you don't mess with, you don't touch. Um, if you're in D.C., you might read it once or twice. It's something we need to preserve. You know, it, it's uh, it's amazing to me. I never thought that I would see this. I never thought that I would hear this. But here it is, nonetheless. You won't believe it. I'll tell you next. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude, one 800 288 
Oh, city council, mayor, just because I'm talking about something else, I haven't forgotten this. I'm going to be taking calls on it throughout the show. So if you're a city council member and you're not taking a nap um, or you're the mayor and, uh, you know, you finish lunch, give me a call. Let me know what we can do with this. Um, 225 the time, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. I'm Rick Roberts. This is News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 232 the time. All right, all right. Let me, um, Randy, if we would, let's bring the music down. I, I've got an apology to make. People used to call here all the time. Not only this show, but in Denver, Kansas City, Southern California, San Diego, Los Angeles. Uh, Rick, they're coming to take our guns. And what did I say? I said, no, they're, they're not going to take your guns. As a matter of fact, what I, would, uh, what I would say to these people, it would be physically impossible for someone to come take all the guns in America simply because there are so many. Even if you could enlist the military, I don't think they would do it. Most of them wouldn't anyway. Uh, you still, it would be physically impossible uh, for them to come take your guns, right? What I did say is they could have an impact on ammunition. And, of course, that came up this week. Um, But I never thought, even with the most liberal Supreme Court justices, I never thought I would hear this. Retired Justice, Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens says the Second Amendment should be replaced, or excuse me, repealed. Retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens is calling for a repeal of the Second Amendment. His comments came in a column that was published in the New York Times today. I'm quoting him now. Rarely in my lifetime have I seen the type of civic engagement. Remember those two words. Civic engagement school children and their supporters demonstrated in Washington and other major cities throughout the country this past Saturday. He was moved by the March for Our Lives movement we saw on Saturday, coast to coast, to the point he said it's time to repeal the Second Amendment. But if you dig a little deeper, which I'm very good at that, I'm not good at some things, but I'm good at vetting, drilling down, as it were, trying to find the root cause. Very seldom, very, very seldom is what, when you hear people say something, very seldom is it just that. There's, There's usually, if you drill down deep enough, something else. And it's so with this as well. He said, these demonstrations demand our respect. They reveal the broad public support for legislation to minimize the risk of mass killings of school children and others in our society. Okay, here we go. You keep drilling down, drilling down, drilling down. That support is a clear sign to lawmakers to enact legislation prohibiting civilian ownership of semi-automatic weapons. I suppose he wants us to go back to cap and ball, muskets, I don't know, something. Increasing the minimum age to buy a gun from 18 to 21 years old. Okay, well, hang on. You've just contradicted the previous sentence. You want to prohibit civilian ownership of semi-automatic weapons. Almost every weapon is semi-automatic. Unless it's a single-shot bolt-action 22 like I had when I was 10. Then he says, increasing the minimum age to buy a gun, contradicting his previous statement, from 18 to 21, and establishing more comprehensive background checks on all uh, purchasers of firearms, again contradicting the previous statement and the one before that. But the demonstrators should seek more effective and more lasting reform. They should demand a repeal of the Second Amendment. You starting to get a picture here? 
The amendment provides that a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Today, that concern is a relic of the 18th century. He said that during the year Warren Burger, as most of you know, was Chief Justice from 1969 to 1986. Listen very carefully now. The genesis for his opinion comes here. No judge, as far as I am aware, expressed any doubt as to the limited coverage of that amendment. Limited coverage of that amendment. Now, we're just about to the genesis of why he said what he said. He continues, when organizations like the National Rifle Association disagreed with that position, the Supreme Court position, and began their campaign claiming that federal regulation of firearms curtailed the Second Amendment rights, Chief Justice Berger publicly characterized the NRA as perpetuating one of the greatest pieces of fraud I repeat the word fraud on the American public by special interest groups that I have ever seen in my lifetime. But, he points out that a 2008 decision by the high court overturned Berger's understanding of the Second Amendment's limited reach. That decision, which I remain convinced, was wrong. There it is, right there overturning a Supreme Court decision, over, overturning Berger's decision. He remains convinced was wrong and certainly was debatable, has provided the NRA, uh, NRA with propaganda of immense power. Overturning that decision, here it is, via a constitutional amendment to get rid of the Second Amendment would be simple and would do more to weaken the NRA's ability to stymie legislative debate. Do you see what's happened here? You've got a retired Supreme Court justice that still has a bone to pick. And he, along with all the leftists in this country, are using these kids, these teenagers nationwide, to try and push a narrative. I played for you what those kids said. They didn't know what they were protesting. Everybody had something different to say. And you have a 97-year-old Supreme Court justice, and God be willing, he lives a lot longer, with a bone to pick from his time on the court, and he, just like the, the people on the left, are using these kids' public demonstrations to further the narrative that he was right at the time, and overturning Berger's decision was wrong. Do you understand what's going on here? Do you see it? Either that or he's a full-blown uber-liberal nut job, one or the other. I don't know. I choose not to think the latter. uh, it's, It's very, very interesting to me. When you drill down and you, you peel, it's like an onion. You start peeling an onion and peeling an onion when these leftists come out. You peel the onion, and they make uh, these what seem like crazy statements, and you peel the onion. And about the time your eyes start watering, you're getting closer to the truth. So you peel back Justice Stevens' onion, and you keep peeling, and I can't believe he said that, and you keep peeling, I, but what's he talking about there? And you keep, And then all of a sudden your eyes begin to tear up, And there it is. He's still upset about that decision being overturned all those many years ago. Either that or he has lulled himself into the uber left's agenda, which I don't think is the case. He was a very intelligent man. Either way, the end result is the same. A Supreme Court justice, retired, has just called to repeal the Second Amendment using the public protest of a bunch of teenagers being manipulated by the left. So to all of you that called and said they're coming to take our guns, I apologize. I apologize. I think uh, dynamically my argument was valid. 
but you're right. This is the second time in as many weeks as somebody has called for complete confiscation of private firearm ownership. The first time, it was the president of all people, the president of the NAACP last week. 2.42 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. We'll come back, take your calls on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 2.47 the time. Glad you're along. Welcome to the Rick Roberts Show. Let's go to uh, Kurt in Waco, Texas. Kurt, thanks for waiting. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good, sir. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm, I'm, as I told you, screener, I'm a uh, security contractor in Afghanistan. I've been out of the country now for about five years. And, uh, uh, of course, I get some news from home. And whatever you know, whatever the uh, people in charge decide to pipe in for us, uh, I actually feel like I'm not even in the same country that I left five years ago. <laughs> I wonder if maybe I, I landed somewhere else. Is unfathomable to me that they're even talking about repeal of the Second Amendment or even joking about it. it it's uh, it, I can't even wrap my head around it. And I wonder, do they even realize that, that that's not going to work? There are many, many people like myself that are not going to tolerate it. I mean, we're more than willing, you know, to say, hey, let's go. You're going to try and take it? Let's go. And uh, I, I don't see any good coming out of that. Well, I think it's... Um... It's a knee-jerk reaction uh, to the all these teenagers, and there were hundreds of thousands um, being driven to the streets by their uh, their leftist masters. I, I think uh, I think it may be a knee-jerk reaction to that. But if you drill down into his statement, I think he's still smarting a bit from the overturn of a decision um, that uh, he was in favor of. Uh, but repealing the Second Amendment, you're right. Even to joke about it doesn't make sense. Uh, Kurt, I appreciate the call very, very much. Uh, let's go to uh, Chaz in Dallas. Chaz, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Hey, just fine. I, I two points because I generated the second one uh, waiting. The first one was is that our uh, this amendment came out of a historical reaction to the British walking around with guns and basically lording over the colonists who I'm sure had their guns confiscated to keep them pacific. So they went, never again, never again. And then the other thing is, is if you think having a, a huge repression of personal ownership of firearms is a great thing, go ahead and just move to Mexico because maybe that's what they got. Oh, and yeah. That's, well, why the, that's why the cartels are able to take over. Mainly, <laughs> mainly sorry about that. It, mainly because it, there's no public ownership of guns. And then suddenly the police, the federales, and the criminals are the only ones have guns. And then you realize, gee, people with guns have got power, and I have none. Well, the justice, the retired justice, says that, yes, I know what the uh, Second Amendment says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And then he added... Today, that concern is a relic of the 18th century. Unbelievable. Unbelievable to me. It, it truly is. Chaz, I appreciate the call very much. Karen in Mansfield. Karen, thank you for waiting. How are you doing, Karen? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Good. Well, um, just a food for thought. When a gun, when someone shoots a gun and it kills someone... Why is the gun blamed when a bomb goes off, like um, down in Austin when the you know the guy was putting the bombs in packages just last week or the week before, and we blame the person? So if you're killed by a gun, they're blaming the gun, but if a bomb goes off, they blame the person. Well, it's a, it's a narrative. It's an agenda. It's an uber-left agenda. It's a democratic um, 
position that is being furthered by all these hundreds of thousands of teenagers. And by the way, New York, Chicago, Detroit, uh, Dallas, uh, everywhere they have these marches. Guess what else they had? Voter what? registration. Oh, nice. So we're, what do you think yeah. they registered? Because they were saying Trump is worse than Hitler. Republicans and the NRA are terrorists. Uh, so what do you think these hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of kids, and by the way, um, I, I hate to correct our former president, President Barack Obama, but when he came out and said, no, oh, these were all organized by 15 and 16-year-olds, 90% no. of the participants were of voting age. Well, and I just don't think that they would be able to organize that big of a thing that like that. You know? Some 15-year-old didn't organize this in study hall right. and tweet it out and have millions of kids show up on a Saturday all across the nation uh, right. where, coincidentally, voter registration was taking place. This is what the Democrats planned to do all along, Cre- right. create a new voting block. But, you know, someone needs to point that out to the kids. And my husband was listening to Mark Levin last night, and he said that they went and asked the kids, like, well, what are you, what are you protesting in semi-automatic guns? And they were like, well, what is that? And he was saying they couldn't answer it. Did you, did you not hear? I, yesterday, I took my audience, my entire audience, and I dropped you right in the middle of March for Our Lives in Los Angeles. Did you hear that? No, I missed yesterday's. Oh, my God. Karen, you missed my show yesterday. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm going to play it for you again because it's it, it, nothing I say, nothing I, I, I can illustrate verbally uh, can do what their own words can do. So I'll uh, I'll do that for you coming up uh, coming up after the top of the hour. All right. And, and the thing that that jumps out at me, aside from the fact that uh, these teenagers of voting age these new Democratic voters, and if they weren't registered, they got registered because no Democrat's going to let a good crisis go to waste, right? Remember that? Um, the thing that jumps out at you almost immediately, none of them are on the some, same page. They all have something different to say. And now a retired Supreme Court justice is calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. My apologies. When I'm wrong, I will tell you I'm wrong. My apologies to those of you that would call up here from time to time. Rick, the agenda is to confiscate all guns. Oh, come on. Let's not go crazy. I, I was wrong. I was wrong. I don't know how they would go about it. I don't even know if it's practical. I don't even know if uh, it could be done. But that certainly is the agenda. 1-800-288-WBAP. Unb- I can't believe the highest court in the land, a Supreme Court justice, retired, is calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment, saying it's only a relic of the 18th century. As my son would say, wow. Your call straight ahead. 1-800-288-WBAP. What would you say to the Supreme Court justice? Well, if you were standing next to him, Obviously, obviously, you respect the fact that he was a Supreme Court justice, but what would you say to him about it's a relic of the 18th century? We'll take your calls next. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, 304 the time. It's a new day in America and not a good day. A uh, retired Supreme Court justice has just called for the repeal of the Second Amendment based on, he says, based on everything he saw on Saturday with all these teenagers running around. And I'm going to take you back to L.A. in just a little bit. You know, even the gun reform lawmakers who claim to be experts, it's, it's, it's no secret to me 
why these teenagers are, are so woefully uninformed. You know, the so-called gun reform lawmakers don't know anything either. They sound like blathering idiots. Representative Diane DeGette, from, she's a Democrat from Colorado, for example, she was, now, she's supposed to be a gun reform lawmaker, right? She was a little bit confused about how magazines work. You know what magazines are. That's what you load your, your rounds, your ammunition into, and then you put the magazine in the, in the firearm. She, she thought that these things came preloaded with ammunition. The magazine, yeah, it's preloaded, and then once they're, they were used, they couldn't be reloaded. You just threw them away. How can, a, how, how can somebody be that uninformed? I will tell you, here's a quote. I will tell you, these are ammunition. <laughs> they're bullets. So the people who have the, those, they know they're going to shoot them. She was talking to the Denver Post. So if you ban them in the future, the number of these high-capacity magazines is going to decrease dramatically over time because the bullets will have been shot and there won't be any more available. So again, she thought the magazines came preloaded, and once you, once you fired them all out of the firearm, you just threw the magazine away. How can she be that stupid? Forgive me. How can she be that uninformed? Why don't we let her write the legislation? Uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. A California Democratic uh, state senator made, it, made repeated errors when describing what he called a ghost gun. It's a firearm that can't be identified through usual means like a serial number. Now, he's, he's got, you know, there's a camera on him, and he's doing this big, long, drawn-out, melodramatic presentation and he holds this up, this firearm, this right here has the ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within a half second. Okay, um, no, that's not right. You can't shoot 30 bullets in a half second. Uh, Senator Kevin, uh, Kevin DeLon, he was displaying a firearm for reporters. 30, 30 magazine clip in a half second. In a half second, uh, he used the illogical 30 caliber clip to describe what he meant as a 30 round magazine. If, uh, in addition, he displayed a homemade firearm, which is highly unlikely to have a 60 round per second fire rate as the 60 rounds per second, 1,001, 60 rounds. Uh, sorry, Senator. And if he knew anything about firearms, he would not have made those kind of errors. Uh, in addition, uh, he uh, went on. He, these were demonstrators. He said he went on to say the demonstrators, you know, they know what they're talking about and they mean business. They don't know what they're talking about because they're listening to you. And other so-called gun reform legislation. Here's a little reform legislation for you. If Saturday's demonstrators are serious about saving American lives, rather than participating in the March for Our Lives, where nobody knew what they were talking about, they should consider taking part in the March for Life. It's an annual pro-life event. The NRA receives nothing in federal funding and is responsible for zero deaths, Planned Parenthood, on the other hand, receives more than $500 million in funding from the 2018 omnibus bill and destroys more than 300,000 human lives per year. So you tell me who's got it right and who's got it wrong. Okay, let's go to uh, Wallace in um, Bowie, Texas. Wallace, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Oh, I'm great. Uh, yeah, uh not enough knowledge in these people's brain. Uh, they're being dumbed down. Uh, yeah, I think it was 2011. Our United States statistics showed that more people were murdered with a hammer than they were a firearm. You can get a hammer for 495 at a hardware store. Uh, 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 I know for a fact knives have probably killed more people. That they, they had to have than any firearm throughout history. Uh, fourth grade, I stabbed a boy with a pencil, got got suspended for two weeks. Uh, you know, uh, this world's gone crazy. 
firearms are nothing more than a tool. Like the previous lady, the caller said, you know, uh, did the bomb do it? Did the gun do it? No. There was a, a crazy mind behind all that act. Yeah, well, uh, we need we need more love in the world. We need more knowledge in the world. History needs to be taught all over again in these people's minds. They need to understand. You know, we we need our tools. How, how, okay, answer me this: How do we go back and educate, uh, re-educate a generation or two that were not educated to begin with? They don't know anything about yeah. the Constitution. They don't know anything about the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights. Uh, they there know nothing go. about. How do you go back and write that that wrong? How do you do it? Yeah, it's hard. I don't know. A lot of people are driving nowadays. We need a lot more billboards on the road with the proper words on them. I suppose. Uh, yeah, my children. Uh, I have three little ones, ten, ten, and eleven, and uh, video games are out. They think their phones are not used. So I, I told them, my dad taught me the phone is designed to send a message from point A to point B, not to play games on. Well, anymore, yeah, they've changed, but uh, I'd rather them read a good book. The books of knowledge are what they need. And, and yeah, I just don't know how we... So much, the history book is so beneficial. How do we go that. back and do it? I mean, we got kids out there 16, 17, 18 years old. They don't know anything about the Constitution, Bill of Rights. They didn't know nothing about... They know that, that Trump is worse than Hitler, probably because they don't know anything about uh, the war. They know nothing about the Third Reich or... jeez. Oh, Rick. Moms demand action for gun sense in America and other such groups against rifles make no sense, as you rightly and frequently point out. The logic used is the same as if mothers against drunk driving made pothole deaths the number one priority in their case. Here, uh, this is as far as I could go, 2015. The 2015 statistics. Deaths. Cause, in 2015, falling out of bed, 10,600. Handguns, 6,500. Knives, 1,544. Bare hands, 624. Blunt objects, 437. Rifles, 252. Nothing like stomping on ants while the elephants are stampeding. I say we ban all beds without safety rails. Um, all right, let me step aside very quickly. Back with your calls. Uh, it gives me no pleasure to say it. A retired Supreme Court justice is now calling for a repeal of the Second Amendment. And based on the email, tons of you are trying to get to that uh, um, that man on the street in L.A. Um, I think it's worth repeating for those people that didn't hear it. This is what you're up against. You're up against, and you'll hear it coming up in just a minute, you'll hear it from the kids, well, kids, 18, 19 years. I don't know what, why they keep calling, the Supreme Court, I know I got a break, the Supreme Court justice calls them school children. School children? What are you, school children? What were you doing at 17 or 18? (laughs) Exactly. Everybody raising their hand in there. They were in the military. I was going to school and uh, as I had could afford it and working full-time jobs. School children? These aren't school children. These are voters now because the Democrats had voting registration at every single one of these marches. And where do you think these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids all over the United States, what, do you think they signed up as Republicans? <laughs> All right, welcome back. 318 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, the Court of Public Opinion. Now, with all due respect, and I know that's an overused phrase, but you can't sit on the Supreme Court and not uh, and not command some respect for everything you go through, and I get that. But he is retired, and I only mention this as a benchmark. He's 97 years old. And after drilling down into his statement, he seems, even at this date, 2018, upset over the uh, overturning of a decision. 
he is either uber liberal and using exploiting, if you will, uh, the kids that were uh, out in numbers, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, or he's, let's just say perhaps, no, I'm not going to say that. That's ugly. I I don't want to say that. I think suggesting we repeal the Second Amendment, I, I would ask him to rethink his position. Hundreds of thousands of demonstrators taking to the streets on Saturday is not the stuff of repealing constitutional amendments. It could just as easily been dubbed a day of rage protest. Of course, it was started because the left decided to exploit a school shooting, which they did, and they did very thoroughly. Their anger is targeted at lawmakers. That uh, the new uh, star for youth, I think uh, Hogg is his name, is all over Rubio. It's his fault. The school shooting was his fault. I'll get into that in a little bit. The Republican Party is another target. President Trump, obviously a target. But the lion's share of it was directed, believe it or not, at the National Rifle Association. You know, no one can doubt the sincerity of their passion. They're teenagers. We were all that way at some point. But their rage is misdirected. The NRA isn't at fault for Parkland or any other shooting. Blaming the NRA, as Michael Dorshowitz said, uh, blaming the NRA for a firearm death is like blaming AAA for auto accidents. It makes no sense. But then again, since was not my primary goal as a teenager, probably not yours either. You know, the NRA is primarily engaged in firearm safety and education. It also, yes, has a lobbying arm. The the NRA Institute for Legislative Action. It's the NRA ILA. But it's not nearly, not even close, not nearly as powerful as gun control advocates would have you believe. They're trying to scare you to death with it to push their narrative. The NRA doesn't appear. You know what OpenSecrets.org is? It's a list of all those people that uh, are involved in lobbying and all of that. It doesn't even appear on their list of top 20 lobbying firms. Nor does hunting and shooting sports appear on that organization's list of top 20 sectors. How about gun control? Nope. Not even a top 20 issue there. Finally, guns and arms is completely absent from the organization's list of top 20 industries. So, you know, you can take that rhetoric that you heard on Saturday and do do with it what you will. The NRA isn't responsible for a single death in the United States. I'll repeat that. The NRA is not responsible for a single death in the United States. The notion that the NRA is some kind of all-powerful, evil organization having this death grip on lawmakers, it's a myth. Look at how much money they they used in their lobbying group. They're not, in the, they're not in the top 20 there either. It's a myth perpetrated by the left to push a narrative to carry on an agenda. You don't believe that? Take a look at what happened. Before the bodies were even removed from the school, comedian Chelsea Handler tweeted, we have to elect candidates that are not funded by the NRA in November. We have an opportunity to elect candidates who won't allow kids to go to school and get shot. It is disgusting how many times this has happened and Republicans do nothing. You all have blood on your hands. Now, how stupid do you have to be to tweet that or even think it? That tells me that she's way too busy. You could sit down at your computer and Google and get more information that she just imparted. If you ask these gun control advocates, okay, well, what do you want to do? What do they say? Almost to a person, ban assault weapons, there you go, that'll take care of it. Well, that's a term loosely used 
to describe a standard semi-auto rifle with a few cosmetic add-ons, maybe a collapsible stock or something like that, a pistol grip. And that's what evidently makes them look scary to people. To me, it makes them easier to use. Those, those accoutrements evidently include, well, like I said, the accessory rail where you can put a light on it or a pistol grip, an adjustable stock. Uh, okay, we've been there. We've done that. A 10-year assault weapon ban was enacted in 1994 and had no effect whatsoever on crime rates. Let me tell you, geniuses, once again, well, ban the assault weapons. That'll work. We had a 10-year assault weapon ban in 1994. It had zero effect on any crime rate anywhere. It turned out to be a zero-sum political fight without a weapon. Nevertheless, when March for Our Lives uh, got together, they were asked by campus reform reporters, what should be done? Assault weapon ban. There you go. Scored the highest on the list. It's what you do. Although they could confidentially state that private ownership of those kind of weapons should be illegal, when they were asked to define an assault weapon, they either walked away or had incoherent answers in return. Um, I mean, no, um, um, uh, it sounds, um, well, it's a, it's an arm, like a gun, for instance. You can go buy it a shot. They had no idea. And like I said, even the gun reform lawmakers don't have a clue. All right. Uh, Coming up here in just a minute, we'll be talking with someone about uh, the Supreme Court justice calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. I'm not making this up. I couldn't make something that stupid up. All right, 3.32 the time. Now, if you're just joining us, retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens is calling for the repeal. Are you sitting down? Driving in the slow lane? All right. Is calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. He says to allow for significant gun control legislation. I only mention this because it's a matter of public record. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, find the reason for his position in his age, but he's 97 years old. He wrote an essay for the New York Times website that repeal would weaken the NRA's ability to block constructive gun control legislation. Now, as an attorney in contracts, you know, I, I basically would take two sets of data. You know, here are the pros, here are the cons, and primarily for overseas companies. So as I read his statement, I started drilling. And as I said, it's like peeling an onion. The closer you get to the truth, the more your eyes begin to tear up peeling that onion. Um, And that's what I found. I think he is still, well, it's one of two things. He has either lulled himself into the uber left movement agenda in this country, or he's still upset about a decision that was overturned many, many years ago. I think it's the latter. Um, how worried should gun owners be about this? Um, for perspective, we've got Emily Taylor. She's an independent program attorney with U.S. Law Shield. You probably heard of them. One of the country's leading voices on the Second Amendment. Uh, Ms. Taylor, thank you for being with me. Thank you for having me on. Um, I was surprised, you know, even joking about repealing the Second Amendment um, makes no sense. Um, I, I think this uh, this retired Supreme Court justice is still stinging maybe from an overturned decision many years ago. I, I don't know. I would assume that. But how important is what he said, how relevant perhaps, uh, in the hundreds of thousands of voting teenagers, because 90% of the participants on Saturday are of voting age, and the Democrats, not to be outdone, were, uh, you know, they had voter registration at every march. How, how worried should gun owners, or should they be worried about this? Well, I do think that it's troubling. And I think that it's troubling because this is an extremist thing to say. It's an extremist position to take. 
And when the people who are already prone to that sort of anti-gun extremism hear that a retired Supreme Court justice has taken that position, it legitimizes it and it makes it uh, feel less radical. And I think that's a very dangerous thing that's just happened. No, I think you're right. I think it lends um, what would normally be written off as, uh, you know, someone that's uh, gone too far out on the limb or, you know, the anti-gun nuts, as they are called by some. Uh, It lends credibility to that entire agenda. He said the Second Amendment is a relic of the 18th century. You know, that that doesn't seem that uh, over the top to most people, but read that that line over again several times, and it is scary. It is, in fact. And, you know, what Justice Stevens should know, perhaps what he did know at one point, is that the Second Amendment exists in order to hold up all of the other amendments without the citizenry being able to organize, and if we must, overthrow our own government, that's what it's there for, without that ability, all of our rights are in jeopardy. And that's something that's unpleasant to think about. It's something that we haven't had to think about in the history of this country yet. But if you ask me, one of the reasons that we might not have had to think about that is because of the existence of the Second Amendment. Exactly, exactly. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, as I said, he was on the losing end, as you write, of the that 2008 ruling. Uh, the NRA, to my, uh, is, to my recollection, has never been responsible for one single gun death in the United States. Um, it's almost as if someone or some organization sought him out because he was on the losing end of that ruling um, that had to do uh, with the NRA. How did the NRA even get involved with this? Well, you know, and and that is certainly something that's possible. But, yes, he was on the dissenting side of uh, D.C. versus Heller, which I think is probably still sticking in his mind. And that was an incredibly important decision for those of us who think the Second Amendment should be protected, because that is what paved the way for, of course, McDonald versus City of Chicago. But those right. two cases combined are the first time the Supreme Court in a very long time had taken up this issue. And the majority, which, you know, you should wipe your brow because it was only a five justice majority, said that the Second Amendment is an individual right. And think about how scary it is that there were four justices who disagreed with that <laughs> exactly. prospect. <laughs> exactly. Even being one of them. Yes, and I think absolutely it still stings. Absolutely, they blame the NRA. And it is just a mystery to me why I mean, it's, just, it's incredible to me that we're sitting in this space right now in 2018 having this conversation. Uh, exactly. I, I couldn't agree with you. I'm talking with Emily Taylor with U.S. Law Shield. Um, And if you don't know uh, much about that organization, the information's up on our website and and whatnot. But um, Ms. Taylor, again, from the last uh, Florida shooting, well, first of all, you know, I've I've got about a 10-minute recording of all these kids, and I call them kids, they're of voting age. 90% of the participants were of voting age. Um, They all say, you know, ban assault weapons, ban assault weapons. Well, we had that at one time, uh, and it didn't change anything. I mean, nothing. It was a zero-sum proposition. If what was it from '94 to whatever it was, um, and because of a pistol grip, collapsible, uh, collapsible stock, and a rail to put accessories on, that is the only reason. And it looks scary, I guess. Uh, that's the only reason they keep. It's a loose, loosely used term. They're woefully uninformed, are they not? They are. And, you know, people should keep in mind that violent crime and gun deaths were actually higher during that assault weapons ban than they are now. Of course, not only that, but there is um, you know, no such thing as an assault weapon, and there's no <laughs> true definition of that. And, and this 2018 bill actually seeks to classify many items as assault weapons that uh, as many as they can, essentially. And it's it is a, it's a scary bill that will not reduce 
violent crime. It will not reduce gun death. It will do nothing more than make it more difficult for law-abiding gun owners to have the guns that they want. And it really, the assault weapons issue, if I can get on a soapbox for just 30 sure. seconds, yeah. is difficult for me to comprehend, particularly when the anti-gun left say things like, the founding fathers, right, which apparently this, this the Second Amendment is a, is, a, is a relic of the founding fathers. They say the founding fathers could never have imagined an oh, assault yeah. weapon. They oh, could yeah. never have imagined AR-15. It shouldn't apply to that. Let us not forget that a musket was the assault weapon of the day. They wanted the citizenry to have exactly what the government was using. They wanted them to have the powerful weapons. It translates today just as it translated when it was written. There is no difference. Yeah, very good point. Good point. Emily Taylor, U.S. Law Shield. First of all, I appreciate you joining me on such short notice, but I had no idea that a retired justice was going to call for the repeal of the Second Amendment. If people want more information from you, uh, uh, Ms. Taylor, how do they go about it? www.uslawshield.com is a great way to get started. You can take a look at what U.S. Law Shield has to offer, and that will direct you if you'd like to learn more to some U.S. Law Shield seminars on gun law, on gunshot wound first aid, on surviving active shooters. There's all sorts of wonderful education available to you there. Uh, i, I got to share this with you. It, it's funny. I used to shoot tournament skeet when my kids were growing up. My daughter had no no interest whatsoever. I don't care about guns. I don't. And of course I have a lot of law enforcement in my family. Well, you know, she ends up going to law school and ends up, uh, marrying a, a police officer. Of course he was in the military at the time they got together, but, um, I got something from her, uh, the first of the year she, her birthday came around and her husband, as I said, is a canine officer for a pretty large police department. And he got her a pink camo AR and she said, look, Dad, it's a pink AR. Now will they not call it an assault rifle? It, it, was, it was hysterical, sort of an inside joke. But I said, no, it's, they're still going to call it an assault rifle. And there is no such, such thing. Um, but you can find all of that out and a whole lot more at U.S. Law Shield. Emily Taylor, thank you for being with me. Thanks for having me. All right, 343 the time. We'll do a little business back with your calls Yeah, retired Justice John Paul Stevens. Yeah, he set off a firestorm. (laughs) Repeal the Second Amendment, you think? Oh, by the way, don't let me forget, uh, in just a little bit, I'm going to take you and drop you right in the middle of uh, March for Our Lives on Saturday. You tell me if you can make sense of anything. All right, uh, 3.48 the time, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Looking at this, you you don't want to be ugly about it, but he's 97 years old. Um, You have to give respect where respect is due. He's either been lulled into this uh, uber-left agenda or are you still smarting from that overturned decision back when he uh, sat on the Supreme Court? Uh, all right, uh, repeal the Second Amendment. Uh, thank God Hillary's not in the White House. Uh, Pete in El Paso. Pete, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Pete? Pretty good, Rick. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for all the information you bring to the table and uh, education you bring along with it. Thanks. Uh, I agree with you pretty much on everything except one thing. Uh you, you stated earlier that these uh, politicians are giving false information due to ig- ignorance. I, I beg the difference in that in the sense that I truly believe that they know what they're doing, they know what they're saying, and they're stirring the pot intentionally on people that are not aware on facts for their own gains. So you're saying they know the difference, they're just playing dumb for the constituency. Exactly. Uh, if you look at history, and you know that old saying that history is bound to repeat itself if it's not all, uh, if, if you don't put attention to it. Unfortunately, our schools don't teach it anymore. Uh, if, if you look at history, uh, at, at, um, 
countries like, uh, for example, Germany, Russia, or uh, others, they, they targeted the, the, the young and they moved their political beliefs to disarm their own countries. Uh, it's kind of scary when you see that it's happening here now. You don't got to go with that back in history too far. You, you, you know, you could go back as when Fidel Castro took over. And that's exactly what they did. They, well, they disarmed the people. Pete, you're right in the sense that um, these lawmakers are doing and saying everything they need to say and do to get these kids to create a new voting block. Uh, I, did you, by the way, see if see if you can get a tally, a total, uh, for the total number of participants nationwide. I know it was a couple hundred thousand in D.C., a couple hundred thousand in, in a lot. Get the, get the total number, because that will give you some indication. Ninety percent of that total number were of voting age. They may have not been registered before Saturday. I promise you they are now, because that's exactly what the Democrats wanted. And what he was talking about, these gun reform lawmakers uh, claiming to be experts to people that know anything, like you, for the most part, they sound like blathering idiots. That's exactly what he was talking about. Representative uh, DeGette from Colorado, she wasn't quite sure how magazines work. She believed they came preloaded with ammunition. Once you shot them up, you threw them away like a disposable camera. No, Representative DeGette, that's not how it works. Um, <laughs> she was thinking, well, we'll get rid of the magazines, which gets rid of the bullets, then the guns are no good. Nobody can be that stupid unless they tried. So maybe Pete has a point. Uh, Even Kevin DeLeon, you know, he held up a a firearm for supporters. Yeah, this is a 30 caliber clip. Yeah, well, what he meant was it was a 30 round magazine. Um, In addition, he held up a homemade firearm and said it fires 60 rounds per second. (laughs) Uh, but there's kids out there that'll buy that hook line and sinker uh pete good call i appreciate it tim in dallas tim thank you for waiting how you doing tim rick doing great i've got another way to look at this and i'm basing a lot of it on volunteering in a memory care facility this man is 97 years old and he has um probably had his glory days but I think somebody may have gotten to him in such a way that would entice him to come back in. And old people are easily manipulated. I'm, well, it's tough to say that, but it, it, it's the truth. You can see that in where I, I work uh, uh, volunteering in a memory care facility. And so they can be easily influenced. And so I'm wondering who would have talked to him to espouse the dogma of the Democrats that he's doing that, wanting to I, I was surprised. Do it. I, you know, I understand his, uh, you know, his position now. I think I was right then, I'm right now, about that decision that was overturned. I think it was in 69 or something. Um, that'll probably stick with you as a justice, I would imagine. And, but I didn't find that out until I peeled that onion back, until I started uh, tearing up, and then I thought, oh, Okay, this is what he's still upset about. Um, but I was surprised to hear him use these teenagers, just like all these liberal lawmakers. That's something I thought would be above him. Well, again, I still think influence is out there from from someone or some bodies uh, to get him to step forward. Because why would somebody in his age even care about getting exactly back out there. exactly but very good point excellent point point. and by the way tim thank you for what you do that's important uh we appreciate it well thank you for what you do rick you help us all all right thank you tim all right when we come back um uh, in uh, hundreds of people emailing um do you think these teenagers know what they're talking about do you think they have a, a valid specific issue that they're dealing with Or are they simply being herded up like cattle to the slaughterhouse by the Democrats? I'm going to let you listen to them. I'm going to take you and drop you right in the middle of March for Our Lives in Los Angeles. This 
is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, three minutes after the hour, uh, by popular demand, <laughs> literally hundreds of you, um, let me let me take you to Los Angeles, March for Our Lives. You tell me, you tell me, are any of these kids informed on the issue? Kids, or young adults, informed. Or are they being herded around like cattle by the left to push an agenda? Hey guys, it's Fleckas. This week we're at the March for Our Lives, downtown LA. What's your sign say? It says the NRA is a terrorist organization. Very cool. And you think ISIS is a terrorist organization? I, I do, yeah. You think Al-Qaeda? I do. Hamas? Yeah. Okay, so they're all in the same category to you? Yeah, pretty much. Brian, hello. Brian wants me to sign his MAGA hat. This is my first signature, guys. My first autograph. I'm Austin. Oh, cool. What's your name? Uh, well, I go by Doppel Bowie. Basically, everyone here, it could all be boiled down to they don't want guns. Would you be down for guns are illegal? Yes. We don't need guns. You lean more towards the all guns? Uh, I'm on the all guns thing. If you look at a weapon of war, if you could have an AR-15, why couldn't you have a nuclear weapon? I mean, it makes sense that you should not have a, a really potent weapon. Do you think handguns should be legal or illegal? Yeah, sure. Um, they they could they could be legal. It's you know legal or illegal. Legal, as long as you're not you know capable of killing dozens of people within a minute. You know. But more, the majority of mass shootings do use handguns, though. That's, that's a bummer. A wise man made a good point to me today. He said, "We used to march for our rights, and now we have people who are marching to take their own rights away and to take rights away from everyone." It's very odd. I don't think they know the difference between a semi-automatic and an automatic. They did. They know that automatic guns have been banned for a long time, and semi-automatic. That's pretty much every gun now. So if you want a ban on semi, semi-automatic guns, you're banning all guns, basically. You do not need an automatic rifle to be killing game. Well, automatic rifles are illegal. Semi-automatic rifles, excuse me. Okay, yeah. Semi-automatic, obviously there is a difference. One trigger pull, one bullet. But the, I, I think when it comes to Second Amendment, it's more about self-preservation and self-defense, right? No. I live in this country 30 years, and I never, never use a gun, and I don't, I don't feel... It's okay you use gun for nobody. What about the Constitution, though, and, like, the rights? The Constitution is okay. You, you, uh, the Constitution is like, a, like, like, like the Bible. You believe, you believe. And you believe in the Constitution, you can kill people. It's okay, you can kill. It's okay to kill each other when you're trying to fight for your country or your land, or, you know. But when it comes to me shooting you, then it's a crime. The, the truth is... This is all based on culture. And these people, they actually believe that gun control can work, but all empirical evidence shows otherwise. Um, the Washington Post actually came out with a fact check on uh, Marco Rubio, and they found that no recent gun law would have stopped any mass shooting. You don't need an assault rifle. You don't need, a civilian doesn't need an assault I have face tattoos. Like, I don't need to be owning a gun. I'm irresponsible already. I feel like I'm in a zombie sci-fi horror movie where people are programmed robots, like the tech companies and the media just wound them up, and then they march and shake their hands and do whatever the TV tells them. What's going on here? What did you see? No guns, fuck Trump, and eating fish. Okay. My sign is reversible. Uh, just like the, the Russian styled R that the NRA is indeed BS and is funneling Russian money to uh, have gotten Trump elected. So we got to get this guy out of office. All right. There's a new theory. The NRA is, uh, has been touching base with the uh, Russian gun pro-gun movements. At least that's what I've heard. Alberto, one of the assistants. Alberto, what is the message in this uh, CNN is very false. What if a criminal came into your house with a gun? You'd be at a disadvantage. Indeed, but that's just, I guess, the bad luck of my, my life, circumstance, or whatever. It had to happen. I don't know. Run, shelter, and well, hide, shelter. And the last one would be if you come, if I run, say someone's breaking into my house, I would go into the deepest, darkest room in the house and hide. Then they come any closer and I have a gun, I shoot them. Do you not agree with that plan? 
I don't agree with that. I would never shoot anybody. Even if they're breaking into your house and have a gun themselves? No, I would not shoot them. Well, I guess we're different there. I think a lot of Republicans think it's all about banning guns and completely disregarding the Second Amendment or repealing the Second Amendment, and it's not about that. It's not a question of abolishing the Second Amendment or taking people's guns away. You know, because the, the point is not to ban guns. It's not about taking guns away from people. No one's trying to do that. I'm Australian. I am from Australia. <laughs> Wait, what does it say? I can't read it. I'm from Australia to say gun laws work. I know that in Australia... Uh, Australia is an obvious one. Australia did it and was very effective. I, I hate how they bring up Australia because Australia, cause the government basically forced people to bring up their guns. And according to um, gunfacts.info, homicide and firearm crimes actually increased after the firearm ban. They said uh, don't take guns away. Australia basically had a mandatory buyback. Well, they had a, a, a mandatory buyback. Can combined with a fantastically popular voluntary uh, give back. No more mass shootings. Not one since. But is it fair to say that there were not that many mass shootings before that? And well, there was one when one is enough, right? Yeah. One, one is enough. So it's really interesting to me is I spoke to an LAPD officer and they told me that most gun crimes in Los Angeles are actually done with illegal guns and nobody here cares about that. There's millions of illegal guns. Most crimes are done with illegal guns. No legislation is going to stop any illegal gun. But nobody here cares. Absolutely. And they tried to fix that. They made a thing called Project Exile, which is basically giving uh, harsh, strict penalties for people that illegally possess a gun. But the Democrats didn't like it because they said it was, you know, significantly targeting minority communities. I, all this talk about gun restrictions and gun reform, they always call it common sense gun reform, which... Uh, to me, doesn't seem too commonsensical. And I think that the overall thing that people are trying to say is basically, you know, common sense gun laws where, you know, somebody who should not be able to, you know, have a fully auto assault weapon. I think that's pretty even with the bump. Well, fully auto is, no, like, uh, civilians aren't getting fully auto weapons. In the Parkland shooting, the most recent case, do you think the failure was in our gun laws or the enforcement of our gun laws? Because the police had 39 times they were alerted that this kid had some issues. The FBI was given a month before, hey, this kid's going to be a school shooter. He said so. He has his guns. He's posting on social media. So I think in this case, if we had actually enforced our gun laws, we would have maybe prevented this rather than trying to not have a gun in this kid's hand. 98% of mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. The gun-free zones doesn't work. The gun regulation doesn't work. Chicago has the most amount of crime, uh, gun violence, with the most amount of gun regulation. What organization are you with? I'm, sorry. I'm with Fleckus Talks. With what? Fleckus Talks. What is that? It's a YouTube. It's a YouTube. Dr. Unicorn! Dr. Unicorn is here. He's back. And everyone's sign is like, you know, stop this now, not one more. And it's like, yeah, everyone agrees. And when it comes to actual solutions, like I'll say, oh, should we put an armed security person at schools? And they're like, what is this, like a prison? I think having armed security in schools is a good idea? F no. No? No. I think having an armed presence in high schools is absolutely idiotic. I don't think fear is a good place to learn. I personally would never want to go to school where I had to worry about, you know, my teacher's gun going off by accident. And the idea of teachers having guns, it's like, do you think an 18-year-old could disarm me? I mean, I'm in pretty good shape for a 60-some-year-old. You are, you are. But do you think there's anyone in the schools that you work with who would be more capable with a gun? Um, I, I think that that is a priority. It's just not a priority that should be there. I should be concentrating on teaching. I should be concentrating on... It's not an armed camp. Do you think an on-site security with an uh, with a gun, concealed carry, is not a bad no, I thing? I think our schools aren't prisons, so let's not let's stop treating them like that. And our banks aren't prisons. Our airports aren't prisons, and we have security there. Cool. Yeah, those aren't schools now, are they? Schools should be a safe zone. Yeah, so shouldn't we protect our schools if they want to be a safe we zone? There's kids should. there. We absolutely should protect our schools through good policy, not through arming people with guns in school. But gun. People who break the laws and have guns and want to do harm to people don't follow gun laws. If it says, hey, no guns in the school, they're not going to be like, ah, crap. The armed security officer on site took him out in like 30 seconds. He was the only death. He took him out, yeah. Like, that's what happened. And that was, I, that's, like, that's like how it should go, I think. It's just the conversation and the language on a human life is just very interesting. Like, it's just so fickle. It's just numbers. And, and it's not. Like, we just need to talk about how we can change it. And maybe that... To talk about changing the entire culture, it's like I'm talking about how to protect these kids on Monday. It's like, if you want to talk about the gun culture in the U.S., like that's a big conversation. That's a whole different debate. Yeah, and to change people's... To yeah, and I want to actually solve the problem, not say, oh, people should be better. People shouldn't care about guns. When it, when it comes down to it, 
it's hit or miss. Uh, I don't think it actually makes us safer to have armed security officers. If you're saying that you know people should have I less guns and then the cops have the guns only and then the cops aren't running into the school, yeah. it's like where I do I? I think we should have cops in schools, and you know whether or not they ran into the school, I don't know. I'm not a policeman. What are you finding when you talk to these people? What's like? What's the what's the common thread? The common thread is they actually don't want dialogue. The solution is the public doesn't need machine guns, automatic weapons. That's yeah, that's illegal already, huh? Uh, machine guns are illegal already. Assault weapons, do you, you know? Assault weapons are in semi-automatic. All right, I'm going to be going in March, and I see where we're going. Yeah, he's out. It's been great. Yeah. Okay. Been good one, man. He's out. You want to talk? He's out. You in general, the outfit. What's what's up with the outfit? I'm not talking. My favorite sign of the day. Yeah. So, uh, less hog, more uh, cash of basically. Totally agree with that. What does that mean? Uh, basically, uh, they're, they're, uh, Kyle Kashev and David Hogg are two of the students uh, from Summon Douglas High School. And I think that Kyle Kashev is being very productive in uh, the fight for gun reform. And I don't think David Hogg is really, uh, I don't think he's trying to reach across the aisle and actually make something happen. I think he's saying a lot of divisive things. Uh, there's, a, there's a right and wrong way to go about the, the cause, I guess. You're out here for a reason. I want to hear why you're out here. It's and the I Donald Trump is worse than Hitler, girl. All right. Well, there you go. Um, there, That was it. That was it. Over a million teenagers, and some of them <laughs> were a little older than teenagers, took to the streets on Saturday. The Democrats had voter registration at every single march. I didn't hear any consistency. I didn't hear any single issue that they were focused on. It was just all across the board. All right, 19 minutes after the hour. By the way, I just, uh, believe it or not, Trump approval rating, Trump's approval rating uh, is the highest it's been in 11 months, 42%. I think it ticked up, uh, what, 6 7%, something like that, six-point increase. Um, all right, let's get to your calls. Let's go to Carmen in Alito. Carmen, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. Hi. Uh, hi, Rick. Uh, thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, I came across a very interesting quote by George Washington where he states, uh, truth will ultimately prevail where there is pains taken to bring it to light. And, and Rick, you touched on the problem, I think, hit the nail right on the head when you said that truth is not seeing the full light of day. There are a lot of people out there that are just plain uninformed, and we can talk ad nauseum on on your program and other programs about whether it's guns or people, but that is not solving our problem. We're doing nothing more than preaching to the choir. I, I think we really need to start spending our time, which you kind of touched upon, is how we get the truth out. And I look to what Mark Zuckerberg recently did with a full-page ad with regard to the uh, apology about information being put out, uh, you know, being captured uh, from Facebook. You look at uh, what Donald Trump proposed with regard to his opioid uh, press conference talking about campaign ads. The New York Times has put ads on Fox News. Uh, Tom Steyer, that uh, billionaire, put out ads on Fox News with regard to, you know, the, the tax plan being a bad deal for the American citizens. And I think that's what we need to focus on, putting out an informational campaign on the likes of CNN, Headline News, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Primetime, and not go on their programs because they'll, they'll just manipulate, but put out an ad campaign that put out the facts. And, you know, you, you, you've touched upon it. I mean, look at the gun violence in Chicago. We got more gun control laws in Chicago. and Look at the gun violence and wonder how many people are, are fully aware of those facts. So I think we put out a fact campaign and get the, the truth out there. And, and, and in hopes that that can finally shed some light and get this country on course. Uh, Carmen, I don't disagree. The problem is um, the Republican Party itself. You know, you've got a really <laughs> a bunch of really old white guys uh, sitting up there saying, yes, it's my way or the highway, pontificating from on high. Uh, they don't think they need to do anything. And they do. I, I'm here to tell you they're, they're going to get killed figuratively speaking, in the midterms. Um, you know, they just probably, the Democrats, uh, what were there, over a million protesters on Saturday? I bet they got half of them registered to vote. 
They created a whole new voting block in one afternoon. The Republicans have got to get off their duff and say, well, just because I'm a Republican doesn't mean that I don't have to do anything. You're right. A, a truth campaign, campaign, an informational campaign. Um, Democrats know how to do it and, and have been doing it. Look at, look at this. The Democrats exploited a school shooting, turned it into a voting block, and these kids are so woefully uninformed, it's not even funny. You would think the least the Republican Party would do is put out an informational campaign. Okay, well, no, the guns don't suit, shoot 60 rounds um, per second. No, this, uh, nothing, crickets. They're talking about uh, a porn star and whether the, uh, the tr- uh, President Trump had sex with her 12 years ago. I don't care about that. You are witnessing the Republicans losing the midterms, even as I speak. You got a retired Supreme Court Justice, John Paul Stevens, coming out doing just what you said in the New York Times. He wrote a piece, Second Amendment ought to be repealed. Democrats everywhere are putting out their agenda, their narrative, and nobody's calling on, calling them on it. Certainly not the news organizations. Well, hold on. What is it assault weapons are again? Well, they're like atomic bombs. I mean, nobody is saying anything. You know, you can forgive these teenagers uh, to some degree for being so uninformed. They're not taught anything in the schools anyway. Well, all right. Let me step aside. Very good call. I appreciate it. 424 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. We'll take your call. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. You just heard it. That's what you're up against. And they believe it hook, line, and sinker. How do you get the message across to them? How do you get the information across to them? How do you get the truth across to them? Thirty-two. the time. Good afternoon. I'm Rick Roberts. Glad you're along with you uh, every single day, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5, your afternoon drive, broadcasting out of Dallas, Fort Worth, and of course, all across the country, it's a toll-free number, 1-800-288-9227, 1-800-288-WBAP, and of course, more controversy about illegal aliens. Yeah, that's right. Um, the new census question, which as far as I know, isn't a new question at all. Are you an illegal alien on the census? And California wants to sue because they don't think that's fair to ask. We've contained this question that's provided data that's necessary for the Department of Justice to protect voters uh, and specifically to help us better comply with the Voting Rights Act. Yeah. Yeah. Should you be able to vote if you're not a citizen? Probably not. Probably not. But like I said, I don't think it's a new question, is it? No, I I don't think so. But California just can't get out of their own way. This is uh, a question that's been included in every census since 1965, with the exception of 2010, uh, when it was removed. All right. Okay, I'm going to go back to something many of you absolutely hate it when I talk about this. But just like this gun control issue, you know, there's no beginning, no end. It's a vicious circle of dialogue. Uh, Everybody's just a step away from being in the other side's shoes. Unless you want to be sitting here in a couple of decades with another talk show host talking about exactly the same thing, it's time to do something. And I think it's reasonable. You call it amnesty, call it anything you want. If you're an illegal alien and you're here in the country, working hard to try to feed your family, pay your bills, doing what you can do, and of course the Democrats calling you everything but what you are, they're undocumented. Well, they left their papers on the dresser at home. No, they're illegals. If they are here and they allow themselves to be vetted, 
They're not drug cartels. They're not human smugglers. They're not dope fiends. They're not uh, uh, part of a gang banging like MS-13. If, if, then let them stay. Part of the reason they're here is because we didn't create and maintain a border anyway. You know, if you were living in a corrupt uh, country like Mexico, Mexico's a beautiful country. Lots of natural resources. Government's corrupt. Military's corrupt. Police is corrupt. You don't know who the real cops are and the fake ones are. And if I was living there trying to feed my family, I'd probably uh, swim the river too. And I imagine you would. So let's quit playing politics with something that's real, tangible, and we're dealing with every day. We don't like this question on the sense. We don't like it. Look, if they're here, they can be vetted. Part of the reason they're here is because of who we elected in D.C. You let them stay and let them work towards their citizenship. And I guarantee you most of them probably would. Let them stay. No threats of ice raids in the middle of the night or at the workplace or at the schools. Let them stay. Let them work towards citizenship. They can't vote if they're not citizens. You got to put an end to this. Otherwise, we're going to be talking about, well, the Republicans today on illegal immigration, the Democrats, you're going to be doing that from now on until you fall over dead from old age. You're going to be talking about the same thing. There's no political will to stop it. Just like there was no political will to create and maintain a southern border after 9-11. If there was any political will, they would have started construction that afternoon. I'm a realist. I got some email from some, what are you, some kind of open border uh, liberal hiding as a conservative. Look, I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. I'm a conservative through and through. But above all things, I'm a realist. And the reality is, illegals are here. Living, working, doing what they can to get by. Should they be able to vote if they're not citizens? It, it's very plain. If you're not a citizen, you shouldn't vote. Should they be worried about deportation? I don't think so, unless they're criminals. If they're criminals, of course. If you're a drug dealer, human smuggler, drug cartel, gangbanger, whatever it is, yes, you should be deported. You can take a few of the naturalized gangbangers with you if you want. But yes, they should be deported. If they're not, let's stop this thing right now. First and foremost, whether it's a wall, I, you know, I've heard so much, is it going to be like the Berlin Wall? I don't know. We can create and maintain a southern border. How come every other country on planet Earth can do that, but we can't? Technologically, I'm pretty sure we can handle that step up with with border patrol with drones with whatever it takes that's number one number one before you do or give anything number one you do like every other country on planet earth has done and create a border and maintain it once that's done then you evaluate how many illegals you have here and you simply say to them look you know part of the reason that we have illegals in this country is because the seamy underbelly of American politics is there was no political will to create a a border like every other country. So you know what? We're going to own part of that. Not all of it because we're not the ones that came across, but we didn't prevent it. Just like every other country on planet earth, we decided we weren't going to do that. We let tsunami waves of central Americans come in and, um, you know, we just didn't stop it. We didn't prevent it. We could have, didn't. The people in D.C., they weren't up to the task. They didn't want to do it on behalf of the American people, on behalf of the country. So, we have created and we're maintaining a border, partial wall, partial fence, technology, drones, I, I don't know, motorcycle gangs, whatever you got, uh, maintain a southern border. Now, if you will allow yourself to be vetted, As long as you're not a criminal, you can stay. 
Welcome to America. And if you want to work towards citizenship so you can vote and take advantage of the great opportunities you have in this country fully, then you can do so. We're not going to come to the school. We're not going to come to the job site. We're not going to you know, come rappelling off your roof at midnight with a SWAT team. We're not going to do it. We're, we're not going to line up buses and start deporting people that we allowed to come here. When most of them are hardworking, God-fearing family people that all they're trying to do is find a better way of life. We left the door open. We didn't leave the door open. We took the door off the hinges in the southern border. You just walked right through. So part of this is, is on us. And these elected officials, you better maintain the southern border. Get rid of the, the criminals. Get rid of the people that uh, nobody wants here, not even the illegals. Everybody else can stay and work towards citizenship. And then put this thing to rest. Get rid of it. No more, well, I'm suing you because you're a sanctuary city. Well, I'm suing you back because you're asking if I am an illegal. Well, I'm suing. You know what? All that is is a monumental waste of your taxpayer money and of time of elected officials. We have non-representing representatives in D.C. that are doing nothing more than, than feathering their own political nest. They don't care whether illegals are here. They don't care who's here. Under Obama, El Salvador, Ecuador, you had tons, you had billboards up for crying out loud in Central America saying, hey, go to America, get this, get that. And you let them in. You had to create, you had to create Air Force, excuse me, you had to create areas for them to be housed at Air Force bases so that they wouldn't spread disease from Central America. Things that we'd wiped out in this country back in the 50s. So don't tell me, well, we're doing everything we can. to try. No, you're not. No, you're not. Look at all the technological advances we've done in this country, and we can't create a border? So a big part of the reason people came here to feed their families and get a job was because we have unrepresenting, non-representing representatives. So that's my answer. Number one, create and maintain the border. Once that's done, you can't do that. Reagan tried to do this with amnesty, except he had it just backwards. Gave amnesty and then decided to create a border. Can't do that. That just creates an incentive for everybody to come here. Create the border, maintain it, then call it amnesty. Call it, you know, if that bothers you, if it keeps you up at night, if you wake up at two in the morning, putting on your slippers, trotting into the kitchen to get a warm glass of milk because the word amnesty is keeping you tossing and turning, then call it something else. But at the end of the day, if they're just here working, trying to have a better life, partially the reason they're here is because of D.C., and the people we elected. So that's my answer. And that's what we need to do. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, I'll be in some home someplace turning on the radio. Hey, turn on that WBAP. And there'll be some talk show host. What are we going to do about illegal immigration? Fix it now. Alexa, Alexa, make me a sandwich. No, I guess that doesn't work, does it? All right. Well, um, I know I've already upset most of you. No amnesty, no way. I don't care what you call it, but you're not going to fix it unless you fix it right now. This is going to go on forever. What what would our non-representing representatives do if they couldn't if they didn't have illegal immigration to deal with, which they, sh- they shouldn't have to deal with that? Create, maintain, enforce a southern border. Vet the illegals that are here. If they're not criminals. Let them stay. If they want to work towards citizenship, fine. If they don't, that's fine too. You know, if they're just here trying to put food in their kid's mouth, uh, hardworking for the most part, then what's the problem? Fix it right now. Don't let this thing go to another administration. Don't let it go another term. Why? You can fix this now. You have to have political will to create a border what other, what other country is there on earth that doesn't have a border? Uh, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to try and think of one. Oh, Australia, there you go. 
Yeah, you got a lot of water as a border there. Great Britain. And let's go to <laughs> look at these guys. Lavana in Dallas. Lavana, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, um, I'm fine talking about letting them stay, but you know, there's some things that have to get worked out first. And um, one of them would be, first of all, we have to be able to trust the people in Congress and our government to actually enforce the laws, because if we're going to fix the problem, you could let them all stay, and then we're still going to be in the same situation with a bunch of, you know, millions of new ones coming over over the next 20 years. So we got to we got to, we have to enforce the laws and we need to build the wall and we need to be able to stop you know the influx of new illegal immigrants because there's going to be a day when there's democrats in office and they're going to ignore the border laws like they've been doing and even our republican administrations have ignored well yeah years, i mean years. republicans and democrats both have ignored it it's you exactly. know this this is not inherently a democratic issue uh, or even a right. liberal issue. This is the fact that the, when you leave a government to its own devices, it stops governing the people and starts creating different profit lines for itself. And that's exactly where we are. I mean, this is not a Democrat issue. You're right. You got. I don't know if it's a wall or a fence or technology or whatever it is. No, but, it's a wall. It's a wall because well, I don't. Wait, wait, wait. We wait. can't trust government. Ivana? We can't. You can't build a wall in some of the topography along the southern, or what should be the southern border. So we border. can build a lot of it. We can do a lot better than what we've been doing. Okay, well, and, I know. don't care. Build a wall. you got to do yes. that first, and then you've got to legitimize the people that are here. If they're criminals, they got to go. What does that mean? What does that mean? Voting rights, citizenship? Okay, Lavana. Lavana. Millions? Uh, hang on, and I'll tell you. You build a wall, a fence, drones, I don't care. Then Lavana shows up and says, hey, I'm from uh, Mexicali. I'm here uh, illegally. I've got a job. My daughter's in school. Um, okay, Lavana, we're going to check you out. We're going to try to vet you to the best of our ability. It's not like the Middle East where there are no documents. You're from a contiguous country. And if you're mm -hmm. not... If you're not part of MS-13, or you're not a human smuggler, or you don't have a criminal record, hey, welcome to America. By the way, here's the paperwork to work towards your citizenship if you want. And Next. how long? I mean, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Work towards your citizenship. First of all, how many? Because it's not just DACA. Are we talking 11 million? Because actually, it doesn't matter. Closer we, to 30. No, it does No, ma'am, it doesn't. They're here now. Voting. No, no. These people will be voting. It does matter. No, you can't vote unless you're a citizen. Right. And are, you're saying allow 11 million people the opportunity to become citizens and vote. I, I What I Is said was what 11. Saying? We need to stop talking about this over and over and over again. Now we got, we got sanctuary cities suing the government, the government, Department of Justice suing the cities. It's First nonsense. All, it's crazy. It's, it's not difficult to figure out. My God, we put a guy on the moon. I, I'm pretty sure we can take care of a southern border. You know, we make sure, Levada, you're not a criminal. If you want to work towards citizenship, then be my guest. Then you can vote. Oh, no, what if they vote Democrat? You know, I don't care where they vote. The fact is, the Republicans need to take the lead on this. They need to be paying attention to Hispanic voters. And potential voters. The only way, the only reason Democrats don't want voter ID is because they don't want people not be able to vote for them. I mean, this isn't brain. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here, Lavana. You know, this is the reason why all we do is talk about it. Okay, got to get off our butts and do something. We have all the illegals here because we had no representative uh, that was willing to say, okay, we need to do something. No, there's too much in it. It's too much of a cha-ching payday for both Democrats and Republicans. So, Lavana, you and me and Dale and Robert and David and Paul and everybody else get together and say, hey, listen, representatives, we're tired of this. We're tired of this. We're playing political football with human lives. And nobody is winning except the people in D.C. So, I'm sorry. You want people to vote for Republicans? Make Republicans worth voting for. 
That's the way it should work. Oh, man, the hate mail is going to come in tonight. All right, that's going to do it for me. Mark Levin, he's up. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? No, one of the things that, I mean, we're sometimes politically opposed, but you make sense. You argue facts. You don't come up with conjecture or anything else. It's it's If we do not do this, and I mean do it now, we're going to be talking about exactly, exactly the same thing 30 years from now. Well, haven't we been talking about this for 30 We've been years? talking about it, well, ever since I've been in talk radio, and that's over 25. All right. Uh, I'm out of time. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether uh, we agree or not, especially on this. Uh, that's my priority. Stick around. Mark Levin's next. I'll see you tomorrow at 2. Your afternoon drive on News to You got a better idea? Tell me. I'm Rick Roberts. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. The only way I know. Oh, get on it one time.